know, you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, uh, it's actually two stories. Uh, there's actually several stories that sort of fit under this umbrella, but I'm going to specifically deal with two examples here because the media's coverage of this during the Corona-19, the media's just been awful. And I know that they're awful all the time, but there is an expectation with not just the media, but with everybody in some kind of massive crisis like this, like thinking about some of the recent hurricanes, Hurricane Harvey, for example, that people just came together and they saw that their neighbors were in need and they just got it done. There is an expectation, and the media never does this, unfortunately, but there is an expectation in a crisis like this for us all to come together put aside our differences at least for a little while until the storm has passed, and maybe then we start talking about politics. The media is still trying to score political points in the middle of this whole thing, and these two stories especially are a perfect little synopsis of why half the nation looks at the mainstream media and says, you guys are fake news. You can't be trusted. When you guys say something, we, at the very least, take it with a grain of salt or might even just disregard it entirely just because you're saying it. Now, I don't think that that's necessarily the right attitude to have about it, but because of stories like this, you understand why people have that level of frustration with the media because they are intentionally misleading people with their stories. The first example of this is that the New York Times the other day changed its headline three different times to cover for the Democrats when it came to the story we were just talking about, trying to put together a stimulus package to aid people during the corona shutdown. The first one there, Democrats block action on $1.8 trillion stimulus, and then you'll see that turned into Democrats block action on stimulus plan seeking worker protections. Oh, okay, so the Democrats are blocking the plan, but they're only doing it to protect the workers. That's really what it is. And, and because the first headline didn't convey that enough, they decided to change it. And then apparently there were some people that had an issue with that one too because they changed it a third time. Partisan divide threatens deal on rescue bill. You see the evolution that's taking place here that originally it's just a very fact-based thing. Like, regardless of how you feel about the Democrats or Republicans, maybe you felt that the Democrat, or sorry, the Republican $1.8 trillion stimulus wasn't enough. Okay, I think you're wrong, but we can have that discussion. That's just giving you the facts. Democrats block action on a $1.8 trillion stimulus. Doesn't say the Democrats were wrong for doing so. Just says that they were the ones that blocked it, which is true. Then, of course, the second one. Democrats block action on stimulus plan seeking worker protections. Oh, see, see, now what they're doing is they're trying to explain away them blocking it. And then eventually they just go to, oh, it wasn't the Democrats' fault at all. It's just partisan divide, partisan divide. It's just people can't agree on things. Now, here's the funny thing about all of this. There's technically not a single one of these headlines that are inaccurate. But you can see the evolution from one to the other where the, the news is constantly changing, even though it's the same story, and trying to explain away the Democrats or try to explain how the Republicans are really the ones to blame and how they're really the ones that are evil. Now, you may remember that they did essentially the same thing, uh, I believe it was last year. Yeah, it would have been last year when they were covering Trump's speech after the Texas and Ohio shootings. Because originally, you'll remember that headline said, Trump urged unity versus racism, which regardless of whether you like the speech or not, regardless of whether you agreed with the speech or not, that's an accurate headline. And then they changed that headline later to assailing hate, but not guns. In other words, they were upset that Trump didn't talk about, let's get rid of guns or let's, you know, get rid of the NRA or let's come up with some new gun control legislation. You see how even though each one of those headlines and each one of the headlines we just looked at are technically factual, you can see the transition from one where it's just, okay, let's just give the people the story. This is what happened. To, let's give the people what happened, but let's also give it as much spin as we can to benefit our side. You see, that's the difference. 
And the news looks at that and goes like, well, we're not fake news. We didn't say anything that was untrue. Well, yeah, but you specifically tried to mislead people and give it a positive spin for one side or the other. That's fake news, or at least that's what a lot of people are considering fake news. Technically, my definition is a little different, but you understand why people get so frustrated with the media when this happens. And I think part of the reason that Democrats felt comfortable in just torpedoing this thing in order to offer a counter bill, which has a whole bunch of crap that has nothing to do with coronavirus in it whatsoever, is because they knew the media would do this for them. They knew that what was going to happen is, regardless of whether they were the ones that blocked the bill or not, the media was going to make it the Republicans' fault regardless. Even if they're not technically lying, the bias is obvious. And that's what people really get frustrated with. And I think what this does, and, and this and also other examples of the New York Times doing this, it shows one thing that most of us have known for a very long time. The New York Times is not a journalistic organization. They are not a news outlet. They are not selling news. They are not selling facts. They are selling people bias confirmation. People want to be assured. People want to know that other people out there are thinking like they are and taking the story the way they are taking it. And that's what the New York Times is really selling people. <laughs> With the constant changing of the headlines, it's almost like, oh, uh, we're getting a whole bunch of angry emails and calls about this headline, maybe we should change it. And then they changed it, and they were still getting angry calls and emails from people on their side. And so they said, okay, we need to change it in some way to make it look like it's both parties' fault, because that's the only way we can justify this thing. But that's not the way a journalist would handle the situation. A journalist, and keep in mind, even though I'm not one, I did go to school and was trained as a journalist. What a journalist would do is say, sorry, that's the facts. You don't like it, don't read it. That's up to you, but I'm not changing my headline. That's what an actual journalistic organization that cared about accuracy in the news would have handled it. Oh, you were offended because it made the Democrats look bad? Sorry. That's what happened. And by the way, same thing if it made the Republicans look bad. There have been some things that you could use to make Donald Trump look bad when you just told the facts and the facts made him look bad. Oh, the facts made him look bad? Sorry, they're the facts. That's how a journalist handles it. The New York Times is not a group of journalists. They are a group of partisan Democrat hacks that carry the Democrats' water, and this proves it. All they are doing is selling a product to other Democrats that want to read in the New York Times that the New York Times agrees with them. <laughs> So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.